Hello Pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James, thanks for joining us for this assembly, unboxing, and overall features video of the brand new Freewing 80mm Yas 39 Griffin. So, um, absolutely gorgeous. By this time, you've seen our announcement. You know she's here. You've probably looked through pictures, the product page and stuff, but now we are here to uh, take you back in time to when we received it. We'll show you how it comes out of the box. We're going to show you a step-by-step -step assembly, so by the time you get yours, you'll be able to re-watch this video and uh, go through it. We'll go through all the spec, because she is carrying that same uh, power system that's in the MIG, only a single engine, one of them, not two, but it is a 1920 KV, 80 millimeter nine blade uh, in runner motor inside and um, she is absolutely stunning you're getting just real quick you got lights on her she's a long 80 which is awesome um, really good presence to her as you can see the scheme is from the Czech Air Force it's their centennial scheme so uh, from 1918 to 2018 uh, is what's decaled up. All the decals come as you see them already applied out of the box. The assembly guys couldn't be simpler. It's just a couple of screws. Four for the vert, four in each wing, uh, four for your rails at the end, and one for each canard up front which, as you can see, fully functioning canard. But guys, the beauty is we made a separate video that you could check out right now. The link is in the description or it pops up on the screen above you here, uh, suggested, and that is a separate video that's gonna show you how to mix together the canards with the elevons and make it all work. We just thought it was too long to put in this video. So definitely check that out. So I say, guys, let's get started with the unboxing. All right, pilot. So as you can see, I didn't get the box art for this. This was an early production run, so they send it to me without the box art. I don't get a printed manual. That stuff all comes to you guys. Um, so this is, though, how you will get yours out of the box. And you can see, as with all freewing aircraft, I say it in every video, it's packaged stunningly. You shouldn't expect to see any sort of nicks, dents, and dings. So as you pull parts out, first thing I saw was that gorgeous vertical, vertical tail. It's got different scheme on each side of it, as you can see, which is nice. And that's a big water side decal, and it's already pre-applied, which is just awesome. You can see it has a lot of plastic bits. You're going to put an antenna on the side. You got nylon hinges on there, ball links, all already applied to the control horn and on the bottom of it you can see your servo lead for your rudder servo which is nicely mounted inside with a, a nice cover on it as well to again hide the servo which a lot of customers have asked for in the past and something Freewing has been delivering on all their newer jets. Then we move over to the main wings you're going to see in there. So each main wing again as you pull it out you're going to see some nice plastic bits. The leading edge all covered in plastic which is awesome. You see your big aileron, again, nylon hinges and ball links. The decals already pre-applied pre on there and they look fresh, they are water slide decals. You're gonna see the side has plastic on it too and that's where your railing will uh, go for your missile rails. If you wanna add sidewinders or any sort of ordinance there, you can. And then looking on the bottom, you do see you again have the uh, servo covers, which are awesome. And then where the connection goes, you just have one lead coming out. It's just for your aileron. That's the only thing in the wing. And then you have your holes. One spar is attached to the wing. And then the other hole accepts the main wing spar that goes through all your main wings. So once you pull those two main wings out, then the baggie's going to have your screws, a couple of control rods. You only need three because the elevators are already uh, set up in there for the canards. So you just have a rudder control rod and two aileron ones. Then you have all your little accessories, your antennas, pedo tubes, and things of that nature in the baggie. Now, taking off the top part, we get to the bottom, and here's the meat of the grip in here. And we'll start, you pull out your nose cone. So the nose cone is mostly foam, as you'd expect, but with a plastic tip that's going to accept uh, your tube on the front. Then we move over to your canards, and they are decorated beautifully, all with a full, fully wrapped um, water slide decal each side different as the real aircraft would be. There's only a plastic mount where you're gonna put the one screw in that's gonna go into the rod that's already uh, assembled on the fuselage when we get to it. 
Then you pull out your back fuse. Now this is really exciting because this back fuse, again, it's a two part fuselage, but what's awesome about it is that additional TV set that we are going to uh, release like we did with the MIG, um, we're gonna have a TV set. So if you're ready to go that way, I wouldn't even install this yet uh, by the time you get yours but uh, I didn't have that here. But if you're gonna glue in the fuselage, very easy. They got the carbon spars back there and the nozzles, but no electronics are in that section in the back. So it's a simple fit. And then you got your wing tips, your wing rails, which are nice and large, very iconic on the Gripen, really adds to the shape of it. And those are completely surrounded in plastic. It's foam encased in plastic, which is really nice. And it has the MWS railing system that fits any ordnance uh, made by Freewing. Then lastly, you get to the meat and potatoes. That's the main part of the fuselage. Here's where everything lives. You're gonna have your gear already assembled in there. All the uh, doors, they're all spring-driven doors to uh, keep it, keep this uh, the weight of this gripping down, which is awesome. But nice honk and landing gear inside that we'll show you in a second. Taking off the canopy, you're gonna see inside, you get um, one extra piece. This is your cannon, which gets glued onto the bottom, so they hid that in the fuselage. But then looking inside, nice and clean, nice space to uh, you know put your receiver gyro out of the way of the battery, and just looks like a nice compartment. This baby can fit anything from a 4,000 to a 5,200, but I know guys are probably gonna reach and throw in sixes and such, but uh, the canopy, the battery compartment is definitely large enough for that. And then looking around the uh, fuselage, you do got plastic on the intakes, which is nice. You got the lights on each side, nav light green on one side, red on the other and then all around the uh the white on top and all little pieces match up nicely for the overall scheme once you get it assembled and all right guys now you see all the parts here laid out she looks like a pretty simple build like i said in the beginning it didn't take that long at all but before we get to the assembly let's run through the specs as for the specifications of the Yas 39 Gripen, we're going to start with the length. She is 1613 millimeters long, that's about 63 and a half inches, and she is 882 millimeters wide in wingspan, or 34 and three quarter inches. So she is definitely a nice significant 80 millimeter jet. Now as far as power, she has a 36, 58, 1920 kV brushless in-runner motor inside. That's gonna be powered by a 100 amp ESC with a 5 amp BEC. And that motor is inside an 80 millimeter fan unit with a nine bladed fan. Inside, she's gonna have all digital Metal Gear servos throughout. As for recommended LiPo battery, anywhere from a 4000 to a 5200, you might be able to get something bigger for sure in there, 6S LiPo. Now, as far as CG goes and rates, guys, definitely go by the book, but we have also made a separate video that talks about the CG. We CG the aircraft on an Admiral 5000 and an Admiral 4060C pack. Those are the two most recommended packs that we were flying on uh, with the Gripen, and also we talk about the rates. So in the book, they give you uh, throws, but I talk about the throws I've used um, when I flew it uh, that I thought was really well for anybody getting started with their Gripen, but obviously rates, CG in an aircraft like this, they can all change as uh, people become more comfortable and want to do different things uh, with the aircraft. But it's a good guide, link in the description, so definitely check that out when the video's done. So that'll do it for the specifications. Let's go through a step-by-step -step assembly. All right, guys, so step one is gonna be assembling your fuselage. So that means taking the back half of the fuselage and gluing it to the front. But now, as you might already know with the Gripen, that we're gonna have available an accessory thrust vectoring unit. What that is is this piece here. It looks just like the back of the fuselage that comes with the Gripen, only this one has servos, the big ball in there for the nozzle that's gonna be able to uh, allow the Gripen to do thrust vectoring. So if you're at this point, um, and you want to do thrust vectoring, do not glue in the, uh, the piece that comes with the Gripen out of the box. You're going to want to order the accessory piece, and if you have that, then you will do that one in lieu of this one. But they both assemble the same. But what you're going to do is, as always, whenever you're gluing foam to foam, you want to use foam tack, and what you want to do is score up each side. So wherever the foam's going to meet, just score those sides up, use an X-Acto knife, razor blade, whatever you got, make crisscrosses throughout it. It just adds more surface area and allows the glue to settle easier. And then I like to put glue all over these carbon rods too because you're never taking this apart, or at least I'm not, 
But remember, if you're gonna put the TV unit on there, then you will uh, not want to glue this part on. You, you will probably already have the TV unit in your hand when you purchase it, um, if that's what you're going for. But uh, if not, you're gonna wait for that TV unit. But either way, once you glue them together, you're gonna press the glue, uh, press the two parts together, pull them apart until you see the stringies there. That adds more air to the mixture. Hold that there for about 60 to 90 seconds, then push it back together. So now step two is gonna be installing your vertical stabilizer. But what you're gonna need first is this go get em wire. So you're gonna run that through the fuselage and that's gonna put the loop end towards the back of the aircraft. Then you wanna loop in the rudder uh, lead. You can see the servo lead coming out. You untie it, loop it through, and then nice and gently pull it back into the canopy. That's so it's more than enough length for you to reach your receiver. Once that's through there, keep pulling it as you start fitting the vert on. It's gonna fit perfectly, but I like to make the, uh, the servo lead nice and taut so that nothing catches in there. And when you press it on, you're gonna use these four screws that you see here. What I like, all the screws come in four little compartments. There's only four different types of screws. So you're looking for these three by 10 millimeter screws here with the flush heads and the pointy end, because they are gonna drive in. So once you get it all lined up, drive in all four screws, two on each side, and you're done with step two. Now step three, you're gonna wanna turn your aircraft upside down for this. We are gonna do your main wing install. And the reason we do it upside down, cause that's how you're gonna screw it together once you get it plugged in. But this couldn't be simpler. Grab your wing spar, and now you will notice two holes on the fuselage. The first hole towards the front of the aircraft, that's gonna accept the spar that's already on the wing. It's the back hole towards the rear in the notched out section. That's where you're gonna put the wing spar through. So do that. Then take either wing, doesn't matter, whatever, whatever side you're working on. Slide it through that main wing, through the main wing spar. Then I like to, then here you want to make sure you connect your aileron servos. So just line up, remember, yellow to yellow, orange to orange. Get your polarity co correct, plug it in. Then there's a nice little space that you can push the servo lead back into the fuselage as you start meeting the connections. Get the other spar through, push them together, and you can see how flush that fit is. Now once they're pushed together, we're going to be using these four screws here, and they're re very recognizable for anyone who's assembled a free wing model. They're the three by six. They're the fattest, shortest screws in the bunch. And you're going to drive those in, two for each wing, and you can see where the holes are. Just line them up, drive them in, and you're done with step three. So now step four is gonna be installing your canards. And this is really easy because your elevate, the servos inside for the canards are already pre-installed. All you can see is one little hole on the rod coming out. And that's gonna accept these two screws here that you see in this baggie. And those are three by eight screws and they only give you two of them. So you can see, just slide on the canards while you're upside down here. Makes it very easy. Impossible to get this wrong, drive in the screws and then you're done with step four. So now at this point, you have a mostly completed aircraft. Now we can get to all the peripheral bits. So the first things first, we have four screws left, and those are gonna be for the railing system on the outside or the pylons. And again, they're all plastic. You can see either one fits either way. Uh, side, it doesn't matter. They look the same upside down side. Just make sure the, uh, the section that should be going forward is going forward, but you can always change it around because they're just screwed in. Take your screws, drive them in, and you're done with those pylons. Then going around your nose cone again, take the pitot tube on the front, that just slides in. I didn't even use any glue for this, it's just a such a tight fit in there. Then you got your antenna which goes on the vertical stab. I used a little bit of foam tack to put that in there. Shouldn't take anything hard, it should be a nice snug fit. Then you have a couple antennas for the top and the, some vertical fins all on top of the fuselage here, and you just wanna use a little foam tack all around. And then on the bottom of the air aircraft, which is cool, they give you this awesome cannon, which is offset from the center. This is an all foam piece, so you're gonna to wanna to score it up like you did with the fuselage. All right, so now that you have all the peripherals done, you have a built up JAS 39 gripping in front of you, and now you gotta do the setup. 
you're going to notice inside there's no blue box or anything. You're going to have two leads from your ailerons or your elevons really and two leads from your canards. So the way you're going to bind this up is like a delta wing, um, a plane that doesn't have an elevator if you will. You're going to be putting both aileron servos into the aileron and elevator port and then you put the canards into two open channels and you're going to want to do some mixing. But as I said earlier guys, we have a separate video showing how to do the mixing and to get yours to work just like mine and uh, definitely check that out. Link is in the description. So uh, when this video is done, go and check that out and you'll know how to mix your Yas Griffin. So now you're going to want to install the three control rods they give you. For your elevons, you are going to put them in hole number two on the servo and attach to the ball link. And for the rudder, it is a one-to-one -one, uh, matchup on the control rods. And then once that's done, again, it's all going to come down to mixing. But that's going to complete the assembly. So now, let's talk about the features. All right, guys, so that'll do it for the assembly. And here is a fully set up, working, canarded, gripping before you. And it is really cool when you pull back on the sticks, you're getting the leading edges of the canards going forward while the trailing edges of your elevons go up, reverse when you go down, but then when you move, when you roll left and you roll right, then uh, they work in unison. So, uh, you know, that's how you're going to set it up. So in essence, if you're using like the DX9, like I have with an Admiral uh, receiver, it's just a combination of mixing. I set the aircraft up for elevons. I have the ailerons plugged into, I'll show you the, uh, the receiver. I have the two aileron ports plugged into aileron and elevator. And then I got the two canard ports plugged into aux two and aux three. And then in the transmitter, I have four mixes. So I have a mix that's uh, going from aileron port to, you know, aux two, aileron port or elevator port, because the other elevon would be on the elevator port, to aux three, then aileron to aux two, elevator to aux, aux three. So you're basically mixing all four together and then just playing with the rates back and forth. And we could do another video to show you how to uh, set that up, but it's gonna be different depending on how you reversed it, where you're plugging things in. Like I didn't worry about where everything was plugged in. I just went to the mixing page and uh, worked from, a, from there because you could get it to work regardless of the way you plug them in as long as your elevons are in the aileron and elevator port and your canards are in the auxiliary port. So uh, yeah, so you see you're all set up. Now that we have the canopy open, I have not you know, pressed this down anywhere, but that's probably where about where I'm gonna mount my uh, receiver. And if you wanted to go with a gyro, I would be mounting that there as well. What I love is everything's pushed up. Your battery, you have plenty of space for a 5,000. Like I said, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to get a 6,000 in here. Let me just try to, there we go, unvelcro the battery. And you can see the space inside and I'll tilt it towards the camera. There you go. So plenty of space in there. And then underneath, all you have is your wiring uh, under there. There's no blue box under there, just an LED light controller. And that controls the sequence on the nose gear light and such. Seeing it all function is really cool. I'm so excited. I haven't flown a canarded uh, aircraft yet. So uh, it definitely gets me you know, stoked about it. But let's talk about some more stuff while we're here again. Just some of the features and all your ordin, all your little peripherals, all look great. Nose cone coming right off uh, with ease. So when you transport it, she could sit on her nose because she has a longer 80. So I know a lot of guys uh, store it, um, store their jets nose down. So you can definitely do that. Let's show you the gear. I'm gonna lift her up here, and again, just show you that working. <laughs> So without the blue box, you're not getting any sort of delay in the gear. It's immediate upon going out. Spring-loaded doors on the back. And then the, uh, you know, the nose is spring-loaded doors on the front as well. But really, really nice uh, suspension too. And now check the uh, main wheels here. Look over at the main wheels. When you do press down, it almost works like a speed brake. They can't uh, outward, if you will, or inward, if you could see the tires. So as you touch down, you're gonna get a little more, you know, drag, if you will, off the uh, off the the mains. So that's all trailing link back there, and then in the front too. But she has a lot of play when you press on her. Really nice. So I'm excited to get this to the field. I think she's gonna be fine off of grass, just the way she is. So now, as far as CG goes, guys, CG. Um, is listed in the book and right offhand, I can't tell you what it is, but what I love, the CG markings are on the wings already. 
and that's pretty much it and then I have a throttle cut on but I'll run it up a second throttle cut is off holding <laughs> Woo! Woo! I can't wait to hear I can't I always like to hear them in the air because the shape of all these jets uh, you know changes just how you hear them when you go out so uh, that's always exciting and one of the best features about this Gripen guys is also there will be an available accessory unit for thrust vectoring for guys who want to explore thrust vectoring explore more aero aerobatics things of that nature we're excited to offer this this foam piece will come separately from the Gripen but if you're going to purchase it and you want to do thrust vectoring then when you do your assembly on your Gripen do not glue down the uh the back part of the fuselage too hard at least um, until you get this piece if you want to glue this in because this will be glued in in place of the first step in the manual uh, you see here it'll fit perfectly in the back of the unit and then we will have videos once we're ready uh, that'll show you how to mix up your thrust vectoring also into your uh, transmitter and such and we can't wait to get out and fly and try the thrust vectoring ourselves but really excited to offer this for anybody that wants thrust vectoring but guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gives you all the information you need to know on whether or not you're going to be in on the Gripen. I think it's awesome because it's just something different. We used to have the Typhoon um, that had the canards. That was the only free wing plane, I believe, in the past that, uh, that had this setup. And now a new one is back and she is pretty hot. I really like the, uh, the scheme as well. Again, scheme is going to come out of the box all done. I really dig the tail flash and how it's different on both sides in this centennial scheme. And uh, I hope you guys like it too. And obviously, we can't wait to see how you guys customize it. So guys, check the links in the description. You're going to get the links to the product pages on both MotionRC.com and MotionRC.eu. We're going to have any flight videos we end up doing. I'm going to put those links in the description of this video. So if they're not there yet, that means we haven't flown it yet. But as soon as we do, those links will be in there. We'll have a link to Hobby Squad because all of our pilots are going to be talking about it there and our management will be in there talking, answering questions, you know, measurements, things like that, all that fun stuff, talking about it until she eventually arrives and then we can't wait to see what pilots do with it. So guys, thank you so much again for watching. Thank Alex behind the camera and leave any comments you want. I'll answer your questions here. I always enjoy interacting with everyone and hit the like button if you can. And we'll see you next time at Motion RC.